welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are in London and I am taking you Christmas shopping in Harrods. It is a Saturday, three weeks before Christmas, so I fear it is going to be very busy. But I've got a little checklist of what I need to get for the parents, I've got to get for Mark, and then a little something for my brother. I managed to get quite a lot at Vista, so I've got my list and let's go Christmas shopping. I am with the husband today and we are in Harrods. We're going to do a quick scout around. We've got gifts. We're going to do gifts for each other, mum and dad. And then I've also got the handsome brother down here, but he uh, doesn't like to be on my YouTube. <laughs> Please Santa, I've been a very good girl. We have decided to quickly pop out of Harrods and have a spot of lunch at one of our favorite Italian restaurants called Giovanni's. It is such a fab little spot. It's tucked away. Fingers crossed we can get in. <laughs> it is unbearably busy, but we are going to get these gifts sorted today. I have fallen head over heels with this pale blue beauty. are now on the hunt for a gift for Mark and Daddy. I'm thinking a personalised wash bag for my father. Wish me luck. I do think they have quite a few options here, so fingers crossed. Hi, are you smart? Are you gorgeous? Huh? Hi, you're a beauty. <laughs> Look at your very smart red jumper. Oh, you're gorgeous. We are currently in Mont Blanc, having a little look at the luggage. The boys need new carry-on suitcases. And oh my goodness me, they're worse than my mother and I when it comes to matching and having the latest edition. Oh my goodness me, I fear that we may be in here for a long time. And what Mark has noticed is that they do M belts. I mean, how tragic would that be? <laughs> Now having a little look around the fine wines here in Harrods. Beautiful, my favourite red wines in the world. Petrus, mm, gosh, Chateau Pomerol, Sassakai, it's just gorgeous. You guys know I am utterly obsessed with Mackenzie Charles. <gasps> what do you think? Do you think I should do my tree like this this year? Hello my darlings, I hope you're all well. London yesterday was havoc. We were not that successful, if I'm honest with you. It was the busiest I have ever seen London. There was a queue to get into Harrods. Harrods was literally shoulder to shoulder and it was a lot. We first went in and then thought, do you know what, we're gonna go for lunch first and hope that it uh, becomes a little less busy. And then when we got back, it was just crazy. But I got so many ideas as to what I still need to get. I'm pretty much almost there. I managed to get as much as I possibly could at Bista. And obviously that was great because there's a huge saving. And then I've just got a few last little bits. Marcus would like a, a carry-on. So bizarre that he wants that for Christmas. Um, so he would like one of these small Mont Blanc uh, cabin bags. He needs to upgrade his current one because both of the wheels don't work. <laughs> so he's literally dragging this heavy bag through the airport. And um, nowadays with the whole four wheel situation, he has not left. So I'm going to keep my eyes on that and I'm a little bit upset with myself that I didn't try and get it during Cyber Week. I don't even know whether it was possible to get it through Cyber Week, but anyway. My father, I want to get him a wash bag, like a duo zip wash bag with his initials. He's had one for donkey's years and it looks really rather tatty. So I want to get him a really beautiful quality, something that's going to last him forever. Oh gosh. That sounds terrible. Anyway, oh, anyway, moving on. Um, and then my mother. 
what do you get the lady who has absolutely everything? Normally I have to go down the route of being super, super thoughtful because I just can't, I can't buy what it is that she wants. She'll probably want like a whole set from Van Cleef or Chopard or Graf and that's not an option. So it always has to be something that's like personalized, fully bespoke or something that's really thoughtful. Uh, for her 60th birthday, we did this album of every single year, uh, obviously 60 years leading up to her birthday, that sort of one shot a year that was really special. Um, so this year I am completely stuck. So any ideas, please, please let me know. Anyway, I'm sat here like a naked mole rat with not a scrap of makeup on. I'm still flabbergasted that I feel okay coming on YouTube looking like this because I would never, and I mean never, ask my girlfriends, I would never have come on with nothing. I've also been bitten by something absolutely enormous on my chest. I don't even want to think about it because I have been bitten by a spider before and it was quite possibly one of the most horrific experiences of my life. It laid its eggs in my foot. It was horrific, horrific. Anyway, I'm not thinking about it, but something has bitten me. And um, today I am going to do a, gosh, my phone has not stopped today. Oh, that's nice. Marcus is in Hackett. Lots of nice stuff in Hackett. Oh, jolly good, wonderful. Buy it yourself. <laughs> I'm so mean. Anyway, as I was saying today, I thought I would do a really wonderful Christmas makeup look with you guys. A little bit of inspiration and uh, we are going out this evening and I just thought date night I could do a really, really wonderful Christmas inspired, super glamorous makeup look with you. So that is what we are going to be doing. So as you can see, I've started off with my trusty old magic cream. Okay, this has got to go on silent. Marcus, I love you, but no. Okay, no. I do put a decent amount of this moisturizer and really let it soak, it just, instantly nourishes and moisturizes my skin, making it feel super, super smooth and really rather plump. It's also a beautiful moisturizer under makeup. It is actually the only moisturizer I use underneath makeup. It's probably, I shouldn't say this, but it's probably not the best for your skin. There are other moisturizers that are more nourishing and probably much better ingredients. It really, really makes the base of my makeup and the foundation absolutely flawless. So I couldn't recommend this enough. And as you can see, I'm really, really almost massaging it absolutely everywhere, down my neck and also onto my decolletage because today, as you can see, I'm wearing an off the shoulder. This is actually a little leotard bodysuit from Wolford. And I'm going to put a touch of highlighter on my collarbones to make them pop, along with something to go over this horrific bite. But we're not gonna go there. We are not going to go there. <laughs> okay, I'll go there. I got bitten by a spider on my foot and I didn't know what it was for months. It was so itchy, I cannot even begin to tell you. It's probably far too much information. It took three rounds of antibiotics to get rid of it. Anywho, right. That is my moisturizer all soaked in and as you can see, it's an instant glow and really, really makes your skin look a lot more youthful. The hair is scraped back and now let's talk base. I am absolutely obsessed by the Airbrush Flawless foundation but it is quite heavy duty and I am really not one that likes that whole cakey makeup look. And as we are creating a flawless festive and glow like makeup look we're actually not going to go that way and yesterday whilst i was in harrods voila i bought the new well i say new it's probably not so new and i bought charlotte tilbury's beautiful skin foundation now i've been told that it's exactly the same ingredients yet it's a little bit of a lighter consistency so i thought we would give it a go together and then for eyes, I'm going to show you how I do my feline flick. So, 
let's get straight into this. So as I said, I'm going in with Charlotte's Beautiful Skin and I chose this in three neutral. I must say yesterday it was so busy that the lady literally just put this on my hand and was like, that's the only option you've got, so you're gonna go with it. So fingers crossed the match is okay. I do normally always go in with the Hollywood Flawless Filter, but I don't currently have a color that is matching the tone of my skin. I currently have four medium, and I think it's going to be a touch too dark. Hmm. I mean, we could give it a go. Mm. It's a little bit dark, but you know what? This always does create a beautiful, beautiful base underneath my makeup. I've simply just popped that on the high points of my face. So cheekbones, touch on my nose, a little bit on my forehead. There we go. And that is all blended in. Now, let's try this out. I actually really like the packaging of this. It's a lot lighter, obviously it's in a plastic. You've got the glass with the gold lid, which looks beautiful and bougie, but sometimes not that practical when you're carrying around your makeup bag. This is a lot lighter and actually it's always pointing downwards, which makes it easier to get it out. Right. Fingers crossed for the color. Oh my goodness me. Here we go. So I'm going to take like a pea size amount and I always use my finger to distribute. Okay, that does look quite light, but as you guys can see, I am really rather pale, but we can bronze this up. So I really just dot my foundation around my face as to where I think I need it, and then I blend it out. I absolutely love this brush. This is Rose Skin's um, number three brush. It's slightly slanted, as you can see, and it's just such a beautiful feeling when I glide it across my face. That is actually a really good color for my skin. Look at that. It almost just looks like my skin. Mm. I like that a lot, but this is really upsetting me. I use a bit of that down here and just hide it for now. And I'm gonna go and just blend the rest of that in. It is super important to go down your chin and down your neck, just so that there's no harsh line. My mother used to come and just scrape my jawline. <laughs> used to drive me insane but thinking back now I used to put on such a dark foundation far too dark for my skin and then never blend down my neck it was such a good look back in the day when I was about 13 14 <laughs> I look back now thinking oh my goodness me what was I thinking and it is amazing how makeup trends change and you're really able to learn tips and tricks that was something at my most recent event at Bista Village that I really, really wanted to teach the older generation, the slightly older ladies, how to contour, because I do think it sounds very scary and it looks scary, but if you know how, it can make such a huge difference and still look supernatural. Talking of supernatural, I think that that foundation is absolutely beautiful keep looking in the little screen above <laughs> just to check out my makeup I'm also going to just have a quick look in a mirror and make sure that that has blended as well as I think it has because it looks perfect on screen and off screen it looks just as beautiful right I think that is stunning I am however going to add a touch of my favorite foundation just over my nose and onto my cheeks because when we add the blusher it sits so perfectly on top of this foundation that I really really want to get that look as well and I mean a really really tiny bit and that's something that I love about Charlotte Tilbury is such a small bit goes a long way so although her makeup is a little bit more expensive than what you would call high street it lasts for so long, so you're not sort of every five minutes going and having to get another refill. 
So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the base of my makeup today. And I'm just using this brush to just almost dab that product in. Make sure it's in all of those nooks and crannies. Okay. Now, for a product that I actually only knew about this year, and I have spoken to you about it before, and I am utterly obsessed, is Rodeal's Banana Low Lighter. It's all about being lit from within, and it literally does exactly what it says it does on this little tube. So, I pop it on the insides. Okay, I am definitely going to have to use my mirror for this on the insides of my eyes, and then I bring it slightly up here, and it really, really creates a lifting effect. Obviously need to put it on the other eye. I pop a tiny bit in the crease of my chin, underneath my nose, because I have little red veins, and then a touch in my T-section and on my nose, really where we want to create a natural light. And then I just use my finger and it takes a little bit of time, but the heat from my finger just melts the product into the skin. That was a little trick that an incredible makeup artist called Cassandra, she actually did my wedding makeup. I absolutely adore her. And she actually only ever uses her fingers to blend in foundation, but I use my fingers to blend in this concealer and it looks just so natural and beautiful. And the glow is instant. As you can see, it has just taken away any dark circles, any bags, and it's beautiful. You can also put this on any blemishes. There we go, that is all blended in. And that is the base of my makeup done. I absolutely love the consistency of this. You need one of these in every single handbag or every makeup bag. Oh, it's one of my hero products. So as you can see, my skin is looking a little bit pale, but trust me, we're gonna bronze this up and it's going to look incredible by the end. Right, we are now going to use my contour wand. Again, this is my Desert Island product, so much so that it's actually so empty that I'm like, <laughs> and I tried to get more in Harrods yesterday and it is sold out everywhere. So if anybody has a little secret stash of the contour wand in light medium, please can you send it my way? <laughs> anyway, so I need to make sure I've got some product. Mm-hmm funny face. If you've seen me do this before, you will know that I look absolutely barbaric for about five minutes, but then it creates the most incredible definition and bronzed look. So, as always, make a funny face. Mm-hmm. 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 Need a mirror. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that is as easy as that. I love this product because it just creates such an easy way of just popping it exactly where you need it. And then you almost sculpt your face. So as you can see, I've just popped it just underneath my cheekbone, down my nose to create a very snatched and narrow nose look because I was not graced with that. And then just across the forehead so it looks really sun-kissed and as though I have a tan. And then I have my Charlotte Tilbury. This is a duo, and I believe this is called her Hollywood Complexion Brush. You can either use this for foundation or contour, but I am a little bit of a stickler that once you have a brush for one thing, do not then mix it into all other products. Honestly, I'm one that has a brush for everything and do not mix it. My mother drives me insane when she comes to use my dressing room table and she's like, oh, I love a bit of that, and mix it in this and mix it in that, and I'm having heart palpitations in the background. Anyway, let's get to contouring. Back to my funny face. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. And just in upward motions, don't bring it down, work the product up. I just blend that beautiful bronzer into my hairline and up to my temples. And literally, it's as easy as that and it's just automatically given me such a sculpted cheekbone look. So let's go ahead and do the other side. 
as it's so blendable if you make a mistake you can literally just keep keep blending and it will just blend out i would suggest having a little bit of a play with this product i'm just looking in my mirror here to make sure that i'm blending this incorrectly so I, as I was saying, I would give this a little bit of a play before you do your makeup and just go out to a party. I wouldn't just slap it on and go straight out. But once you know how to use it, it is so easy. Now for my nose, you can actually blend up and down the nose. And it's really, really important to make sure that it is super blended and then we're also going to go over the nose with a slight bronzer and then a finishing powder just to ensure that you don't end up with sort of a landing stripe down to your nose <laughs> trust me it's not a good look i have been there done that got the entire outfit right and then an amazing trick that chloe lloyd taught me is that you take your nose contour up and join it up with your eyebrows so that you get that natural line down your nose you can use your finger again just to melt the bronzer and the contour together and then you have no harsh lines back up into the eyebrow and voila so that is my Hollywood contour stick done. We're now gonna go over with a powder bronzer. Another trick that the same makeup artist taught me is to get all of your liquids out of the way first before you put the powder on. That way you don't then mix the liquid with the powder and the powder with the liquid. The only time you add liquid on top of powder is with a highlight. So let's keep going. Next, Again, another one of my favourite products, and this is the Filmstar Bronze and Glow. It comes in a palette with the highlight, which I love. It's just such a fantastic combo, especially for a night out where you just need to warm yourself up a little bit and then pop a tiny bit of highlight on those little edges to make them pop. So, I have a very cute little sculpting brush. Now I know where that is. I have my makeup bag that comes along on the road with me every single day and then obviously I have everything else on my dressing table so I don't know whether I pop, did I pop it in here <laughs> I did okay so this is the little mini brush and this does actually come in a little gift set with this a great great Christmas present or little stocking filler so if I can find the duo with the palette and the brush I will pop it in the description link below and I use the bronze side, mm -hmm. make a funny face, and just go over where we've been with the contour wand. Mm -mm -mm. We go down the cheekbone, up round the forehead, blend it in to your hairline. Mm -mm -mm. I then bring it down slightly, just make sure that it's not completely white here. And then down my neck slightly and just make sure that it is blended into those wonderful sideburns of mine. <laughs> if I get really close, my family, well mostly my brother actually, used to call me a tennis ball. Thank goodness I have blonde hair because actually I am so hairy. This is actually such an awful angle and far too close for my liking. But I have so much hair that it comes down and it attaches to my eyebrows. Obviously I have my eyebrows tinted from time to time. and uh, But if I had this all tinted, I've got a really furry face. It's really attractive. It all comes down here, the sideburns. Anyway, my mother was the same and she wants thought, do you know what? I'm gonna go and see whether I can have my sideburns waxed. I would not recommend it, not recommend it enough. Her, obviously she's very, very fair haired and um, <laughs> it started to grow back in like sort of like black stubble. It was not a good look. Anyway, I don't care about my little furry bits. I've always wanted a Cara Delevingne brow. I was not graced with them. I try and get them as bushy and fluffy as possible. And I was one of those awful teenagers that overplucked her eyebrows. So I've been sort of trying to look after them ever since. Any 
Anywho, let's continue. I then take a little brush like this. This is actually from Hourglass, it's number four. It's a beautiful blending brush. And I pop it into the same color that we've just used as a bronzer. And I bring it down my nose just to define that snatched nose slightly more. And again, take it through the eyebrow and just bring it down the nose there. And it just makes it a touch more natural. On camera, it's looking a little bit more harsh than what it does in real life. But that just creates a really, really wonderful, narrow nose look. Now, in most of my other makeup looks, I always use my bronzer as my eyelid color, but we're going for something slightly different today. I can't wait for you to see it. Now, for blusher, one of my favorites, this is Charlotte Tilbury's Cheek to Chic in Pillow Talk. It's just a really beautiful peachy glow, and I pop that on the apples of my cheeks, and I work it actually upwards creating a really beautiful peachy pink glow and there's a touch of highlight in the middle here which I love I just think it creates just such a beautiful youthful color on the cheek but we're also going to add a pop of the new Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wand and this is in color Pillow Talk. So we're going to pop this on slightly closer to the end but we're going to focus on the eyes and the brows. So for brows, I picked up one of my favorite products. This is the Legendary Brows. I've been out for a little while. I also love Chantecaille's Brow Gel, but this creates a little bit more of a bushy effect. It has a slight tint to the color. So this is in color Taupe, and the color just almost grabs every tiny, tiny little pesky hair in your brow, creating a fluffy brow look. I do love the Shantakai one, but it doesn't pick up all those baby hairs, but this one does, and it does make them slightly darker, but I really love this dramatic look for this time of year. And as you can see, I'm literally just using this tiny, tiny little brush. You can almost hardly see it. Let me show you. It's a tiny eyebrow, almost like a mascara brush, and you use it to just brush those brows, it's going to focus, yes, brush those brows upwards. I am quite careful that I don't touch my skin because it has got a slight tint to it. So that is one brow, looking rather wolfy, and that is the other brow. I'm going to quickly jump ahead and do the other brow quickly. That is my eyebrows finished. You know me, I don't like to complicate things and I like them looking rather bushy. So I've just brushed them up and I think that that has created a really, really lovely look for those brows. Now, for the eyes. This is one of my favorite eye looks for this time of year. It is really glowy. It's very minimalistic, yet it's so dramatic. This type of makeup is very, very eye-catching. I can't wait to share it with you. So it is a combination. It's a base of the Charlotte Tilbury Champagne, and this is Eyes to Mesmerize. And it's like a little creamy, creamy eyeshadow. So I literally just take my nail, pop it on the back of my hand, and I honestly use such a small amount. I use my finger and I just pop it over the lid. Literally there is nothing professional about this whatsoever. It's so easy and everybody can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. So I'm just gonna use my mirror here and I just blend that lovely cream into my eyelid. And that just creates a really glowy, perfect base. And it almost blends into the really beautiful foundation and glowy base that we've just created. You can work that up a little bit into your temples, up to your eyebrow. And it creates just such a beautiful glow. 
and also when you're having photographs taken this Christmas, the light just shines off the top of your eyebrow bone. It's such a beautiful look, trust me. Let me get a little tissue. You're currently standing on my little tissue box. It's a rather sketchy setup this afternoon. Hopefully you don't fall off. <laughs> I have very near killed my camera on a few occasions. Now on top of this, we're going to pop one of my favorite shades of all time. This is also called Champagne, but it's by a brand called Chantecai. It's got beautiful packaging, and as you can see, I absolutely adore this. I'm going to use a little brush, something like so, pop it in, and I'm just going to dab this product in. It's almost got a hint of pink. And with that champagne cream underneath, it just looks sensational. As you can see, it's very light, bright, very pretty. And then when we add the flick, it's beautiful. Let's do the other eye. And as you can see, I'm just dabbing this product on and it sticks to that beautiful cream underneath. And with this eyeshadow, I really bring it into the inner corners of my eyes and it makes such a big difference. Now, for the moment, you've all been waiting for the flick and how I do it. I'm probably going to completely mess this up considering the camera is on, but let's give this a go. It does sometimes take a little bit of time and sometimes a few different goes. You normally get one eye absolutely perfect and then the next eye you're like, oh my goodness, where am I going? Just wipe it off with a Q-tip and try it again. So, I'm going to stay quiet and focus, but what I do is I take the feline flick and I bring it as close as I possibly can to my eyelash line. And then I get to the end of my eye and stop. Stop. And then we'll come back and chat through it. Right, okay. So, as you can see, I've done a very, very fine line from the very inside of my eye. A very, very fine black line to almost the edge here. And then we're going to take it up. I believe it's all about how you take it up. And I use my fingernail to just create a very, very fine line. It's not too thick. I find it's the easiest and the most perfect black wing. So. I take my pen like so and I almost work out, I imagine where I want the wing to be. I take the line and unfortunately you have to commit. So, right, I'm going to try and be quiet for this. I balance my hand actually on my face and then if I make a mark with my foundation then we can always adjust it afterwards. As you can see, I've done a very, very small wing and I've joined it up to that line that we just created on our lash line. I'm now going to take, whilst it's still wet, my fingernail and I'm simply there. I've used my fingernail just to drag it up slightly and it almost buffs out the black line and it creates a lifting effect. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I create my feline flick winged eyeliner. Hmm, I'm quite happy with that considering the pressure of the camera. I'm just going to just quickly neaten that up slightly. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do the other eye quietly. <laughs> and come back. I always think when I'm talking, especially when I have a girlfriend here and I'm trying to talk her through it, I always mess it up. So I'm going to stay quiet for a moment, do this and come back. I've just done the first step. I've taken the liner to the edge of my eye and we're going to take it up. Wish me luck. <laughs> And that is my very classic and very, very simple winged eyeliner look. Now let's finish this off by popping a little bit of the champagne underneath the eye, finishing off with a very black and glossy mascara. And because it's Christmas, we have got to add a red lip. So let's keep going. We're going to go back in with the beautiful champagne shade from Chantecai. Where are you? I'm going to pop it underneath 
my lash line. I love this product so much. I couldn't bang on about Chantecaille more if I tried. I am aware that I'm like a warped record, but their products are so beautiful and I just love everything about the brand. Their philanthropy is just truly remarkable. What they do for nature, giving back, charity, all of these incredible different zoos, farms, beekeeping, but not only are they an incredible brand in that way, they make the most beautiful products. And as you can see, that has just brought that whole eye look together. We are now going to add one of my favorite mascaras. Now this is Charlotte Tilbury's Full Fat Lashes. I did actually pick up a refill yesterday, but this is still fine. And I use it to create a glamorous lash look. So, I take the wand to the root of the lash and give it a wiggle. You really get the product in there and then you bring the brush upwards. It creates a very large, dramatic lash look without anything looking too cloggy. So we're gonna give it a wiggle. And then I use the wand to just get those little pesky ones on the inside. And do not worry, we're all human. I always manage to get mascara on my eyelids, especially when I'm running from one thing to the next. I'm normally doing my makeup in the car whilst going over potholes. Going to put a disclaimer out there right now. I do not do my makeup whilst I'm driving. When someone else is driving and I'm in the back trying to do my makeup, I manage to get my mascara absolutely everywhere. But if you carry a few little Q-tips in your makeup bag or your handbag, then it's just so easy to fix it. You can then just take the blender brush back over with the eyeshadow and just fix anything. But today, I don't think that is needed because I have been a good girl. <laughs> oh my goodness me, you guys are probably watching this thinking that I'm utterly crazy. I'm going to go ahead, fast forward this, and do the other eye. And that is my lashes done. As you can see, they're very fluffy, big, glamorous, just how I like them. Another mascara that I absolutely love and that I use actually more day to day is the Chantecaille one. It has this incredible ingredient that makes your lashes grow and I swear by it. So I will also leave that in the description box below. Now, as it's Christmas, I think we need to add a red lip just to finish this look to perfection. Let's add a little bit of highlight next. Now again, these are the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light ones. You can get them in a gift set for three, which I think is fantastic. So I'll also leave a link below for those. But I'm just going to dot this on the high points of my cheeks, my cupid's bow, and then just delicately dab it underneath my eyebrow bone. And then actually, I've got this beautiful highlighter, which I think will complement the eyeshadow very, very well, and it's from NARS. She have a tiny, tiny little one that I got last year in a Christmas cracker. NARS sent me the most beautiful Christmas um, gift set to unbox, and this was in it, and I swear by it. So it is called Orgasm. It is their highlight one. As you can see, I absolutely love it. And then I take a little brush like so. This is one from MAC, it's the 224 one. And I work it into the product and I just delicately take this product around my eye like so. And it is the most stunning shade. I also use this for so many other areas as well. You can create a beautiful halo, bronze to halo look with this as an eyeshadow. I pop a tiny bit on my cupid's bow and the very, very tip of my nose. <laughs> Normally makes me sneeze doing that. And voila! Now let's talk a red lip. As a blonde, I found it really, really difficult to find the perfect red for me. I have blue eyes, which, which if you pick the right red, it really, really makes your blue eyes pop. But the wrong red just looks 
oh it looks awful so trust me when i say i have trialed out so many different reds and i have a few options for you now the red that I think is a perfect, perfect colour for me from Charlotte Tilbury is a colour called So Marilyn. And as you can see, it's quite a bluey red. I know that sounds a bit odd to say, but trust me, we'll pop it on and then I can show you what it looks like. And then of course, the classic Chanel. And this is Gabrielle Rouge Coco 444. And again, that is the classic red lip. And what I love is also Charlotte Tilbury's Walk of No Shame lip liner. I always, always start with the lip liner just to ensure that I've got the shape of my lips done correctly. I am guilty of slightly overlining my lips because I like that full plump lip look without looking, you know, too much. So I always make sure that my pencil is sharpened to perfection it just ensures you to get that definition and let's face it lip liner is sometimes a little bit difficult especially when you're doing a red lip liner so i always do my bottom lip first and i just take my lip pencil stop talking <laughs> and work it underneath that lip and I do take it in quite far because when we smile we don't want there to be any part of the lip that isn't covered so I do actually use the lip liner to just pop a little bit of color on those inside corners so that is the bottom lip done bear with me I know I look ridiculous but let's go ahead and do the top lip. Take a little bit of tissue and wipe any of that foundation away. I wouldn't do that if I was just doing a pale pink lip, but as we're going all out and doing a red lip together, we need to ensure that it's perfect. So to ensure it's perfect, I've got to stop talking to do this part. Now that is my lip liner done. As you can see, I've put a line in the middle and a line in the middle at the top. Not only does it make it easier to make sure that my lips are exactly symmetrical on each side, it also adds a touch of plumpness when we add the lipstick. I look so crazy, but bear with me. Now, which one to pick? Golly, I don't know. Do we go? This one has quite a high gloss. This one is slightly matte. Do we want to go high gloss? We want to go matte. <sighs> okay. As we've done pretty much the majority of our face in Charlotte Tilbury, let's stick to Charlotte Tilbury. Right, here goes. Let's do this. Oh, I quickly ran away to grab a Q-tip and I take a clean Q-tip, and as you can see, if I do this, <laughs> no one screenshot me, or if I smile like a big Cheshire cat, you can see the insides of my lips that aren't quite covered. If you take a clean Q-tip, and you just almost make sure that it is fully, fully embedded into the lip, it's not just sat onto the surface, you can then also just use the excess lipstick on the Q-tip to really, really get into the inside and then the corners, all those nooks and crannies of your lips. <laughs> because I go around going, <laughs> That is how I do my red lip. You can also take a tiny, tiny little brush almost the brush that you would use to do your lipstick here we go it must be in here somewhere here we go something like this and i add a touch of my concealer we can go in with my banana low lighter and i dab it onto that brush 
dab it onto your hand to make sure that not too much of the product is going to come off and you can define the lip. It does make such a huge difference, especially when you're wearing red. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my finished red lip. I absolutely love the combination between the flick, the really glamorous lashes, and then the stop out red lipstick. Now, to make my eyes pop just that little bit more, I go and I blend everything together with an enormous, this is my Tom Ford. It's so old and it's so incredible. It's the 05 one, as you can see it's all rubbed off, but they're just such incredible quality that they last a lifetime. This is my Charlotte Tilbury's airbrush bronzer. And I take the big brush and I just work it along my hairline, up there, up here, <laughs> and then down my neck. And I use quite a lot of this down my neck just to ensure that the colour is the same. I'm going to take it down my chest. These earrings were not designed to get bronzer on them, but hey ho! And that is the bronzer. And then of course, we need to set this. I cannot believe I did not know about this. It is called the glass powder. And it almost vanishes your pores. And it also sets your makeup to last all day, all day, all night and even when I get home in the evening my base is perfect. It is such an incredible product. I'm now going to find a brush and I'm going to show you how I pop it on. So as always with this a little bit goes a long way. So normally what I do, I'll show you, is I take my brush and I literally dip it into the very very top, tiny like delicately dip it, I have about that much. I then take the lid and I tap it into my lid. So you have about that much, really such a small amount. And then I work it into the brush, tap off the excess, and I glide it across my face. And I dab it into the eyes, guide it on my T-section, a little bit underneath my nose, we want to glow, but we don't want to sweat. And it also just blends that nose contour. Oh golly, I've just put my elbow in the product. <laughs> Whoopsie, trying to be so smooth and I've managed to really just go in. I'm a right nana, aren't I? As I was saying, you can glide it down your nose and it just blends that contour to perfection. I am obsessed with this makeup look. It is really one of my signature looks for this time of year. And as I am wearing an off the shoulder bodysuit, I feel that we could do something here. I'm obviously wearing gold earrings. I can't believe I've not, I've not got my, most of my jewelry on. You're probably thinking where on earth is her wedding ring. My question is the same. I think it's by my bedside table. Hmm. No one go and jump on that. My rings are by my bedside table. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the final look. I am absolutely obsessed with this makeup look for this time of year. I love a red lip. I think it makes my blue eyes pop and it's just my go-to for this time of year. Any questions, let me know in the comments below. I will link all the products and as always, sending you so much love.